in football at four. I'm going to make a slightly bold prediction. We don't need to get out the bold prediction bells and buzzers, but I'm going to make a prediction here um, and then talk about how it applies to a, a Panthers situation. I think Brandon Ayuk is going to end up back with the 49ers. Even though there's multiple reports out there from guys that I don't know saying that the deal is already done and he's going to be a stealer. I think he ends up back with the 49ers. And I think from the situation I'm about to write out for you, the Panthers need to learn from what the the Niners are doing slash might be doing to bring Brandon Ayuk back to the Niners. Because the, the Panthers were in a similar situation not that long ago. Going into last offseason, Ayuk was in a – or, or similar to the Ayuk situation now was the Brian Burns situation. Young player, has done very well, nearing the end of a rookie contract, fifth-year option time, uh, looking for a new contract, potentially asking for a trade. Brian Burns, ed, edge rusher, uh, Brandon Ayuk wide receiver, two positions that the NFL still values. The Panthers ended up accepting a trade with the Giants – for a couple of second round picks, a couple of late round picks, pick swaps, and uh, and then the Giants went on to give Brian Burns a massive contract. The Niners seem to be slow playing it much, much more on the trade front. Here's the lesson that I think everybody should learn. Until a player is traded, right, until the papers are signed, you can always salvage that relationship. Don't resign to trading a great player just because you feel like you have to or because you feel like, well, we tried, and now what are we going to do? There's another local uh, local example we could call this. Uh, the Martin Natchez rule, if you're a Canes fan, right? Even if it feels like all the signs are pointing to this guy needs to be traded, you don't have to. Ayuk wants Washington or he wants Pittsburgh, right? Depending on all these things that, that you're said. The the Niners came out said they want a wide receiver in return. I don't think they said that because they actually do. If you're trading away Brandon Ayuk, you're saying we don't need an elite wide receiver. You're saying we have Debo Samuel. We like our first round pick, Ricky Pearsall. We like Kittle. We like CMC out of the backfield. We don't need that. So why would they hint and leak that they need a wide receiver? Well, because Washington and Pittsburgh don't have wide receivers they'd give up. All right, so now you've eliminated Ayuk's favorite destinations from the potential trade partners. The Niners leak that they have agreements with the Browns and the Patriots which means Ayuk would have to talk with them about their his next contract, right? Because this, this deal is interesting because uh, the Niners can't just trade him anywhere. They have to trade him somewhere where he's going to sign a contract extension because nobody's going to give up anything of value for one season of Brandon Ayuk, but they will for a future of Brandon Ayuk. So, team, leaks, the Browns and, and the Patriots, we've agreed on compensation all they need to do is agree on a contract with Brandon Ayuk, and we can make this happen. Here's why I say I go out on a limb that he returns to San Fran. I think Brandon Ayuk, more, more specifically his agent, his representation, will go talk to one of these teams and say, all right, let's get to work on a contract. And they're going to find a contract, market value. And Brandon Ayuk's going to go back to the, the Niners and say, perfect, it's great. We've agreed to a contract, signed, sealed, delivered. And the Niners are going to go, we'll pay you that. Yeah, yeah, why don't you just stay? We'll give you that same amount of money. That way the Niners didn't have to negotiate the contract. They let the market set the contract for a player who probably had a little bit of over-heightened uh, sense of value, right? Wanted $33 million from the Niners. Go out there, find out the market is $29 million, uh per year. And, and he comes back and goes, All right, here's the deal I'm going to agree to with the Patriots or with the Steelers or with the Browns or whoever's going to make this trade. Then the Niners say, I'll match that. Then Ayuk would sit back and go, all right, I get to be on a better team, better quarterback, better offense, better coach, where I already live for the same amount of money. Sure. That is slightly outside the box thinking that may allow the Niners to keep a great player 
when it seemed like there were no solutions at hand. And it's the type of thinking that I wish the Panthers used with Brian Burns last preseason. But they didn't. Right? So then this offseason, with the, the whole contract thing became different because he was one year into the future, and, and you had to get what you could, and you didn't get enough for him. This is where um, you have to be fluid. You have to recognize every situation, and and you have to stay ridiculously calm. Maybe my favorite part of the Brandon Ayuk saga, and if, you, and if you've been following it, if you're an NFL junkie, you've seen it. Uh, there's a clip from a couple days ago of Brandon Ayuk. He's, he's been at practice occasionally, right? He's holding out, holding in, whatever you want to call it. Walked out on the practice field with the Niners, and he bumps into, or actually walks out to, like, directly, uh, the GM, John Lynch, and the head coach, Kyle Shanahan. And they both turn around, and it's handshakes and daps and little bro hugs, and they're smiling, and they they talk for a minute or two. Then Brandon Ayuk walks away. The world took this as Brandon Ayuk's going back to the Niners. That's a celebratory handshake. They must have just agreed on something in the other room, and Ayuk walked out, and he, and he said, hey, I'm back, and that's what this handshake was because it looked like good vibes. No, do you know what it was? It was John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan are wildly relaxed. That's what they look like greeting a player who they are actively in intense negotiations with. You're not tense. You're not giving anyone the cold shoulder. It's, hey, what's up, Brandon? Hey, man, wish you could be out here. I understand you got some business going on. Handshake, bro hug, see you later. Stay ridiculously calm in every situation because it might end up leading a great player back to you. Because how different would this season be if the Panthers still had Brian Burns? How many times can we say throughout training camp, Jadeveon Clowney looks good. Is DJ Johnson really going to be the player on the other side? Is DJ Wanham ever going to get healthy to be the guy on the other side? We're really depending on Eku Liotta or, or Amari Barno to, to get healthy and be an edge rusher. Jadeveon Clowney and Brian Burns sounds like one of the best duos in the league. But didn't have the foresight. Just like just like with the Niners, right? The Niners, Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Ricky Pearsall, Jawan Jennings sounds like one of the best wide receiver cores in the league. Why would they give that up? Why would they... Uh, uh, resign themselves to that not being their wide receiver core until it's absolutely stone cold lead pipe lock not going to be their wide receiver core you have to find a way to make every situation work for you